week on One Devotion. Our 15th anniversary celebration revisits the 2001 champions. A newcomer from Down Under follows in some famous footsteps. The Euroleague's oldest player takes a trip down memory lane. And eight more teams join the wing column in the second week of action. Among just three still active players who can recall the first Euroleague season back in 2000 is Italian big man Denis Marconato, who has returned to the competition this season with a new team, Dinamo Banco di Sardegna Sassari. Marconato, Nico Sisis of Broza Baskets Bamberg and Juan Carlos Navarro of FC Barcelona Lassa make up that exclusive club of long-lasting players from 2000. But Marconato is a few years older than the other two and continues to compete at physically demanding position of centre. La differenza da 15 anni quando l'ho vista crescere l'Eurolega è che adesso c'è un gioco più atletico, molto più veloce e più spettacolare e molto più bello da vedere. È migliorato tantissimo anche eh, a livello eh, televisivo e ci sono molte più emozioni, c'è molto più entusiasmo. Last decade, Arvida Sabonis and Daryl Middleton each competed in the Euroleague at age 39. Johnny Rogers won the title at age 38, and Dan Gay appeared in a couple of games when he was 45 years old. Previously, the greatest Italian big man of all, Dino Minigin, played 10 Euroleague games after turning 40 in 1990. But in this century, no player 40 or older has attempted to play a full season for any Euroleague team until Marconato. Il segreto di giocare di continuare a giocare è, è aver avuto un po' di fortuna a stare nei grandi club, aver sempre lavorato con grandi allenatori e aver cercato sempre di imparare ogni giorno di più da qualcuno. Quindi è questo il segreto e mai arrendersi alle difficoltà. Marconato had the rare pleasure of going all the way to the Continental Championship game with his hometown team, Benetton Treviso. The most bello, anche se non è finito bene, è stato il 2003, la finale a Barcellona contro il Barça. Abbiamo perso, però è stata una stagione fantastica, è stato un evento bellissimo, vissuto molto bene. It was with the team that denied him that 2003 title, FC Barcelona, that Marconato would return to the Final Four in 2006, in his first season playing outside of Italy. But they couldn't get past the semi-finals that year in Prague. He subsequently played one Euroleague season each for Montepaschi Siena and Benet Cantù, before rejoining the competition after a three-year absence with Sassari. Posso aiutarlo eh, dando qualche consiglio ai ragazzi più giovani, eh, soprattutto in allenamento, nelle partite, facendoli tranquillizzare eh, nei momenti più critici e dar qual sempre qualche consiglio per vincere le partite. Another Euroleague season will give Marconato the chance to reach career milestones of 200 games played and 1,000 rebounds. Maybe even to improve on the 140 block shots that rank him fifth this century. Importante è continuare ad andare avanti, eh, farò un'altra stagione, spero di migliorare questi record e spero che qualcuno poi li superi. But despite being two years and four months older than any other Euroleague player, his own records matters less to Marconato than a dream that he still dreams, and that could keep him playing even longer. I won't win the, the Euroleague.
The Euroleague's rise to global prominence began on October the 16th, 2000, when the first tip-off between courageous clubs that had recently joined together to take charge of the continent's top competition. Months later, the spotlight belonged to a memorable new champion, who triumphed in the only five-game playoff series to ever decide a European title. Kinder Bologna was an exciting mix of well-versed veterans and unknown rookies, several of whom soon dominated the sport. I don't think that even, uh, let's say, Kinder itself, uh, the, the, the management or the coaches didn't think that things could go so well as, as they did. It was just hard work and desire and you know things things going well that uh, um, you know being in the right right place at the right time for all of us the right place for 20 year old Matthias Smodis was nonetheless a totally new environment for him this was a very special year for me I came from Slovenia a very small town to a big city, Bologna, a uh, big sports city. Uh, there was a, a barrier of language. Uh, I didn't know two words of Italian when I got there. Uh, got injured, I was well accepted later on in the team. The season started for Kinder with one superstar, Sasha Danilovic, retiring after the team's very first practice. But that did nothing to hold the team back in the long term. The chemistry of old, old in, in, <laughs> in a not old uh, meaning of the word, uh, players and the young, uh, promising athletes or stars that want to prove themselves. Uh, we had on Manu Ginobili, who was electrifying. We had a very good coach and everything just gelled that first year. That very good coach Ettore Messina would go on to win a total of four EuroLeague trophies. He would also become much more than a coach to Smodis. For me, I was like a, 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 a father figure because, you know, I come from a divorced family, uh, so I didn't really know my father. I know my father, but I don't know my father, if you can understand me. Uh, so Ettore kind of filled that gap. He was a teacher of basketball, but later on also a teacher of life because so, basketball was uh, for me the, the the meaning of life uh, for let's say 15 16 years and he was kind of the, the let's say the the director or the the, the teacher uh, in that period what also made that season unique was the five game finals in which kinder was taken to the limit by tau ceramica of vittoria in a dramatic series, the teams traded wins to take everything to the last game in Bologna. We uh, understood uh, even before before the game that this was maybe maybe even a breaking point uh, in our season and maybe even a career. In front of a packed home crowd in Game 5, Kinder did come out on top, taking the decisive victory 82-74 to become the first of the new EuroLeague champions and complete a remarkable season for Smodis and his teammates. The game was uh, something that uh, we could carry on, I believe, at least something that I carried on in later years in my career because uh, it meant that that day, that moment, you had to give your best, uh, be 110% uh, and uh, come out on top. And now it's time to review all the action from round two of the regular season. Real Madrid east past Cervena Zvezda, Bayern Munich's defense inspired a win over Himke, and Strasbourg earned a stunning victory over Fenerbahce. Determined to bounce back from its opening round loss, reigning champion Real Madrid raced out to a big early advantage at home to Cervena Zvezda, and then continued to pile on the points. JC Carroll led five scorers in double figures, and Sergio Rodriguez dished 11 assists as the host won 98-71.
Bayern Munich delivered a determined team performance, powered by Dion Thompson and Nihad Djedovic, to overcome visiting Himki Moscow, whose rally behind Alexei Shved wasn't enough to prevent a 69-60 victory for Bayern. And the group's action concluded with a major upset in France as Carl Weems top scored with 22 points for Strasbourg, whilst Lewis Campbell delivered seven assists to secure a huge 91 70 win against Fenerbahce. With Real Madrid, Bayern, and Strasbourg all breaking into the win column at home, all six Group D teams now have one and one records. Anadolu Efes held off EA7 Milan, Limoges triumphed on the road against Cedevita and Laboral claimed a thriller against Olympiakos. In an entertaining game in Istanbul, Jason Granger and Thomas Hertel dished the assists for Anadolu Efes, while John Diebler enjoyed another good night of shooting. But EA7 Milan responded through Alessandro Gentile and Milan Matsvan to stay close until the final quarter, when Efes pulled away for an 89-73 victory. In Zagreb, Limoges used a big night from Nobel Bongu Kolo to repel a Sedevita challenge led by Jacob Pullen and seal its first Euroleague road win of the century, 80-84. And Laboral Kucha answered the call against visiting Olympiakos, overcoming a nullified would-be game winner and 28 points by Matt Loyeski, thanks to weekly MVP Ioannis Borussis, whose career-high 28 points sparked a thrilling 96-89 overtime victory. Undefeated FS now leads the group outright, while four teams have one win each, and Sedevita keeps searching for its first. Panathinaikos aced its home opener against Karsiaka, as did Barcelona against Yelonagora, while Lokomotiv edged out Jalgiris on the road. In Athens, Panathinaikos grabbed its first win in convincing fashion as James Giss dominated with a career-high 27 points, many coming from Nick Kalathis, who delivered 11 assists. Kenny Gabriel led Pinar's challenge, but the hosts won comfortably, 85-73. Jalgiris and Lokomotiv battled hard in a close contest in Kaunas, with Jan Vujuka scoring 22 points for the home team, but Malcolm Delaney responding with 21 for the visitors, which just held on in the closing stages to win 74-76. On the road in Barcelona, Mateusz Ponitka and Dejan Borovniak powered Zielonagora to a late lead, but Samardo Samuels hit back with 23 points and the hosts prevailed 78-72, thanks to a huge late basket from Shane Lowell. Lokomotiv has Group C's only perfect record, followed by four teams with one victory each, while Zielonagora is still winless. Unikaha handed Maccabi a defeat in its home opener. Seska piled on the points in Sassari and Bamberg defended its home court against Darul Shafaka. Mindaugas Kuzminskas helped establish Unikaha's big early lead before Maccabi bounced back behind Trevor Mbakwe and Taylor Rochesty. But an outstanding Richard Hendricks stood tall against his old team and Unikaha claimed an impressive 82-93 victory, the first against Maccabi in its home opener this century. In Sardinia, David Logan inspired Sassari early, but the visitors took over with Nando De Colò leading seven double-figure scorers and Minos Teodosic helping Seska dish 33 assists, the most ever by a EuroLeague road team in a 78-107 victory. And in Germany, Darius Miller and Elias Harris helped Broza Baskets build and sustain an advantage that Darul Shafaka could never respond to, as the hosts won their first 86-76. Seska Moscow and Unikaha stay perfect at the head of the group, followed by Bamberg and Darul Shafaka, with Maccabi and Sassari winless.
Morning. Hello, Turkish Airlines Euroleague fans, and welcome to Who Said Newcomers. Today we're in Piraeus with Patrick Young and Daniel Hackett. Let's play. First question, let's see what you know about your new city. Tell us a well-known monument of Athens. Acropolis. Acropolis. Number two, do you know the population of Athens? One, two million. Four million. Tell us a typical dish of Greece. Sublaki. What is it? Sublaki. Sublaki. Yeah, it's good. I was going to say Greek salad. <laughs> <laughs> say something in Greek. Canis, Pame, Orea, Aristero, Aristere, Calmera, Kalinika. Number five, who's your team captain? Vasilis Panoulis. Which teammates have spent most years here? Uh, Prisic. Oh, how many? He's always, always been here. Tell us the name of your club president. Angelopoulos Brothers. Tell us the colour of your team's logo. Red and white. So, to decide the winner, there is the last question. When was your team founded? 1921. <laughs> you see it all the time. Congratulations, Patrick. You're the winner. <laughs> The steady trail of Australian big men making their mark on the Euroleague this century has a new member who needed just one game to start turning heads. Brock Motum celebrated his 25th birthday and his Euroleague debut by putting down a game-winning dunk for Shalgiris Kaunas in the season's opening week. As an instant hero in basketball-mad Lithuania, Motum now understands better what David Anderson and Nathan Jawai, two of his predecessors from down under, told him about the Euroleague. Yeah, well, they've had great success over here, so uh, when I was on the national team these last couple summers, I've been talking with Dave and Nate just to get a little bit of insight about what it is in the different clubs, and I think I've been able to learn a little bit from them, but the best way to learn is through doing it yourself, so I'm excited to play this year and learn for myself. As the first Aussie big man in Europe and the first player from his country to win a Euroleague title, Anderson has been Motum's go-to guy for advice on his own Euroleague adventure. A lot of the national team, we go against each other and we hang out, so we have similar positions and he's had a very successful career over here in Europe, so I think uh, any knowledge I could get from him was good. Anderson's status as a three-time champion and a player ranked among Euroleague's top 12 this century in points, rebounds and performance rating make it no surprise to hear Motum say that his advice has been particularly beneficial. He's been in many top teams, so he just gave me, I guess, insights to different practices, uh, different types of coaches, different styles of players. So it wasn't anything specific, it was just a broad knowledge of the game. With their advice in mind, it didn't take Motum long to get comfortable in Kaunas, where he has enjoyed getting first-hand experience of his new city's famous passion for basketball, as well as the first-class facilities offered by Shalgiris. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, it takes me about five minutes to get to and from practice. Uh, all the facilities are in this one building, so it's amazing. Uh, the people have been really nice, they're very passionate about basketball, so engaging with them around the city has been good. Like Anderson and other former Euroleague big men, such as Jawai and Matt Nielsen, Motum spent two of his formative years in the world-renowned Australian Institute of Sport. He believes his intense focus on basketball at the famed Sports Academy in Canberra played a major role in his development. For my year, it was in preparation for the World Championships, so they brought in the top 14, 12 or 14 guys in our age group, and we just lived together, practiced together, basically 24 hours a day for two years. Yeah, it was great. It was great for me because we had 
A lot of the other guys my age were really strong, but they were all living down there. So when I went down there, it was against those guys every day. And when you're against high quality people, you always bring yourself up. Being in that environment, there's no distractions. Uh, a lot of your friends back home at that age get into parties and things like that. But if you're there and you only focus on sport with a whole bunch of other like-minded people, it helps you focus a lot more. Among those like-minded people was another EuroLeague rookie this season, Ryan Brokoff of Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar. As luck would have it, the friends and former teammates at the Institute of Sport would meet up, going against each other in the second round of the EuroLeague regular season. Although Brokoff and Lokomotiv got the best of Jalgiris this time, Motum is delighted to see his former school and teammate playing in the EuroLeague with him. Yeah, we went to the Institute together. Uh, we spent two years there, we played on the national team and then sort of kept in touch while we were in the States for college and then this last summer played on the national team again together. So yeah, um, it's great for him to make his debut and fortunate for me to make it at the same time. So looking forward to playing against him. Ioannis Borussis delivered a vintage performance on Friday night to inspire Laboral Kucha Victoria Gasteis's thrilling 96-89 overtime home win against Olympiakos Pireos and earn himself the weekly MVP award for round two of the regular season. The veteran big man was simply unstoppable as he dominated the boards against his former team, registering a big double of 12 rebounds and a career high of 28 points. He scored six of his 11 two-point attempts and added two of three shots from downtown, completing his scoring by hitting 10 of his 13 free throw attempts after drawing no less than seven fouls. In a sensational personal display, Borussis also made further contributions by claiming four steals, delivering three assists and blocking two shots. That all added up to a personal index rating of 44, easily the highest of his 224-game EuroLeague career and the best of any player so far this season. This is the fourth weekly MVP award of Borussis' career and proves he is still a major force to be reckoned with as Laboral Kucha gets its season up and running. Number five, Sassari, Italy. Joe Alexander in possession. Nice move and going up above Kyle Hines to throw down a brutal rim rocker. Joe Alexander making it look easy. Number four, Bamberg, Germany. Explosive offense from Broza Baskets. The pass from Bradley Wanamaker and Elias Harris. What a slam. This is how to throw it down. Number three, Athens, Greece. It was the James Gist show for Panathinaikos. This is the pick of the bunch. Nick Kalathis with the pass and Gist throws it down. Beautiful touch on the pass from Kalathis and there's Gist. Number two, Barcelona, Spain. Barcelona trailing by one in the final stages. Satoransky can't score, but Shane Lawal explodes to convert a huge putback dunk to give his team a lead which they would not lose. Shane Lawal. Number one player of the week from Madrid, Spain. There's a lot to do for Rudy Fernandez. Beats one man, beats a second, and then a circus shot. Incredible play. A sensational basket of individual brilliance from Rudy Fernandez. A spin, and then somehow getting the shot away. Incredible from Rudy Fernandez for Real Madrid. The play of the week. Valuable wins are up for grabs in round three of the regular season, which is showcased by a classic game of the week between two of the continents, true giants. Group A offers a rematch of last season's semi-final, as Fenerbahce Istanbul and high-flying Jan Vesely look for revenge at home against reigning champions Real Madrid and masterful floor general Sergio Rodriguez. In the same group, Hinky and Servena Zvezda will lock horns in Moscow, while FC Bayern Munich host Strasbourg to break their tie in the standings. In Group B, EA7 Milan welcomes Olympiakos and a pair of point guards face their former teams as Daniel Hackett returns to the fashion city and Oliver Lafayette tries to get the best of his old friends from Piraeus. 
Also in Group B, French champ Limoges looks to make the most of home court advantage against Laboral Kucha Vitoria, while Anadolu FS hosts Sedevite Zagreb in Istanbul. The game of the week comes from Group C, and it's a true classic, as Barcelona and inside ace Ante Tomic protect their court against longtime rivals Panathinaikos and hard driving floor general Nick Kalathis. Group C also sees the passionate fans of Pino Karsiaka welcome Jalgiris Kaunas to Izmir, while Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar visits Stelmet Zielona Gora in Poland. And in Group D, superstar Kyle Hines faces his original EuroLeague club for the first time, as he and Seska Moscow host Broso Baskets Bamberg, and its new man at power forward, Nicolò Melli. Round 3's Group D action also boasts a pair of first-time encounters as Darul Shafaka visits Unikaha Malaga, while Tel Aviv is the venue for Maccabi's face-off with Dinamo Sassari. The race towards the top 16 continues in Round 3 of the regular season.